The Brembo Inertia Power Cycle is one of the very first electric motorcycles that, maybe, is a functional vehicle with a practical use. If you're a would-be green biker, you've probably already read a few reviews, seen the ads, websites, and blogs. But before you spend close to $8,000 on a commuter bike, wouldn't it be nice to get a five-minute second opinion from an independent expert? You're in the right place. Welcome to Summary Judgment with Mark Gardiner. I borrowed this bike from my friend Mary Mallon. It's up here in my loft because I managed to completely drain the battery in the course of a short test. And I need to recharge it because he's going to get off work soon, come here, and want to ride it home. That noise you hear is a fan that pulls the charger. I think there's just enough juice to get Harry back to his place, so I'll turn it off now. Of the electric bikes I've ridden, this is the best finished with the most confidence inspiring components and build quality. But is it worth nearly eight grand? I mean, that's more than a Kawasaki Versus, although admittedly the Versus works out about the same price if you factor in the inertia's tax credit. It's almost twice the price of my favorite baby commuter, the Kawasaki Ninja 250, or triple the price of my current runabout which is a Yamaha Vino 125cc scooter. I'm comparing it to a couple of basic commuter bikes because that's what this inertia is, with its top speed of about 60 miles an hour and a range of 30 to 40 miles, depending on how it's ridden. So where does that leave you besides stranded on the road if you don't watch the battery levels and lay off the throttle? This bike is fun and functional for short city rides. It doesn't pretend to be a sport bike, but the suspension, brakes, tires, and general handling will let you surprise a few riders of old-fashioned gas-powered bikes. The operating costs should be a lot lower than any gasoline-powered motorcycle. That said, most typical small commuter bikes are fun to ride too. They've got better overall performance and much greater range. For the price of an inertia, you could buy a conventional bike and have enough money left over to cover a lifetime's worth of gas, oil, and maintenance. Personally, there's not an $8,000 gap between my low-carbon Yamaha Vino and my no-carbon bicycle. If I did have eight grand to spare, I wouldn't hesitate to invest it in this company. Brahma was the one EV bike maker that seems to have a real business plan. If you want to spend $8,000 to feel good about yourself, this is the way to go. You'll have a fun way to make a short, non-freeway commute, and you'll be able to brag to all your friends about your small carbon footprint. And this is a historically important bike. So besides recouping a few cents a mile in operating costs, eventually you may find yourself with a real collector's item. Well, I better push it outside. Harry will be here any minute. One thing's clear from the moment you start the inertia. This isn't your dad's motorcycle. It's as easy to use as a twist-and-go scooter with about half the carbon footprint. No wonder this Brammo's already got lots of fans. All right. Right. You're just going to beat the storm. Okay. Thanks for letting me use your bike. I had a great time. I had a great time on yours. Don't forget that I left that uh, fuel cock on. So. Okay? Yeah, it's a problem you'll never have. Okay. See you later. Right, we'll see you. Despite the bike's limited range and high initial cost, our day with the Inertia convinced us that motorcycles still have a bright future. We'd like to thank Harry Malin for loaning us his personal bike. Until next time, do what I do. I wear a helmet, a jacket, boots, and gloves, but I ride as if I'm naked. Thanks for watching Summary Judgment.